Good morning, everybody. This is Mike Brennan at the National Hurricane Center. It's Thursday, September 8th, just after 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. We're going to start off today's briefing with a bit look at the big picture here from GO16. We have two hurricanes we're watching this morning. We have Hurricane K approaching the west coast of the Baja California Peninsula, and we also have Hurricane Earl that's located south of Bermuda. Uh, we're going to start off with K since uh, it's the, the one closest to land right now. It's currently centered about 85 miles west of Cabo San Lazaro. You can see the center here on the satellite imagery. K is moving toward the north northwest at 14 miles per hour. You can see it's a big storm. It's got a big cloud shield, big area of moisture that's going to be moving northward through the Baja California Peninsula, western portions of mainland Mexico, and up into the southwestern United States over the next couple of days. Maximum sustained winds with K right now are, are right around 85 miles per hour. And we are expecting the center of K to move across the west central portion of the Baja California Peninsula in this hurricane warning area that extends from north of Punta Abreojos to San Jose de las Palmas. We have a hurricane watch south to Puerto Cortez. And given the large wind field of K that you can see here when this orange area is showing the tropical storm force winds, with tropical storm warnings in effect for almost the entire coastline of the Pacific side of the Baja California Peninsula and also the Gulf of California side, and also for western portions of mainland Mexico south to Guaymas along the uh, uh, Gulf of California east coast. And all that wind is going to move northward through this region as we go later through today and into Friday. Beyond that time, we're expecting uh, K to gradually start to weaken as it hits cooler waters up here off the west coast of Baja and turn the center of K turn westward as we move through Friday and into Saturday. And K will lose its tropical characteristics and weaken to a remnant low as we go through the weekend into the early next week. In terms of the wind impacts, we'll talk about that first. Tropical storm winds, as you can see, are already occurring from the previous map across portions of Baja. And those will spread northward later today and into tonight and into early Friday as we get into the northern portions of the Baja California Peninsula. Now, ex uh, outside of K's sort of core wind field, the larger scale pressure gradient is going to generate the potential for some strong winds up into Southern California, especially on Friday where there are high wind watches in effect for portions of San Diego County mountain and valley areas all the way to the San Diego County coastline, other portions of sort of the Inland Empire area. So stay tuned for information from your local National Weather Service office and other officials on the potential for some potentially strong gusty or even damaging wind gusts, especially on Friday into this region. Now we're going to hit the rainfall, which is probably going to be the biggest impacts that we're going to see from K. You can see this is the rainfall forecast basically from today out through Sunday morning. And these orange and red areas are showing the potential for widespread totals of 6 to 10 inches across the Baja California Peninsula. Isolated totals could reach as high as 15 inches. Uh, we could also see 2 to 4 inches with isolated amounts as high as 6 across northern portions of, of mainland Mexico and also extending up into southern California where we could see isolated totals as high as 6 inches, especially in the mountainous areas to the east of San Diego. And in southwest Arizona, we could see 1 to 2 inch totals with isolated amounts as high as 4 inches. And that's going to potentially lead to some flash flooding problems. This is the risk of flash flooding over the next three days, essentially uh, from today through Sunday. The highest risk of that flash flooding is going to be uh, here in interior portions of Southern California, southwestern uh, Arizona. That's going to be mainly from Friday into Saturday morning. This includes places like Yuma, uh, the Imperial Valley, uh, Joshua Tree National Park, the Salton Sea area, the mountainous areas of San Diego and Riverside counties. And then as we move from Saturday into Sunday, there's going to be a sort of a broader threat of a flash flooding in this yellow area that's going to extend upward into portions of southern Nevada, western and northwestern Arizona, and into the Los Angeles area and into areas to the east of Bakersfield and Fresno. So uh, widespread heavy rainfall potential here, especially Friday. Uh, it's Friday into Saturday and then extending Saturday into Sunday as well. Uh, the other big impact is going to be uh, in the waves and storm surge. We have the potential for storm surge, a dangerous storm surge along this portion of the hurricane warning area as Kay's uh, center crosses the coast. This is a, a forecast of the significant wave heights associated with Kay that are in these red areas are essentially 18 to 20 feet of significant wave heights. So da dangerous damaging waves potentially along the west coast of the Baja California Peninsula. That wave field is going to move northwestward with K and is going to potentially lead to dangerous surf or will lead to dangerous surf conditions across much of the Southern California coastline. This is the rip current risk essentially uh, for Southern California. You can see a moderate risk here in the San Diego County coastline and then a high risk from Orange County, Los Angeles County up into portions of Santa Barbara County. And this highest uh, risk rip current potential risk is going to start on uh, Friday and continue into the weekend. 
So now we're going to move on to Hurricane Earl, which is uh, uh, moving to the uh, uh, north northeast at about 13 miles per hour. It's currently centered about 230 miles south of Bermuda, which you can see here on the satellite image. Kay's maximum winds right now are around 105 miles per hour. You can see it's starting to it, the eye is not terribly apparent in the satellite imagery, but the aircraft has reported an eye that's in excess of 50 miles in diameter. So uh, Earl has this very large sprawling eye right now. We are expecting Earl to continue to strengthen, and you can actually see the eye on the uh, radar imagery from Bermuda here from the Bermuda Weather Service. Again, center, centered about 230 miles to the south of that island. So you can see some of the outer rain bands beginning to affect the island here. We do have a tropical storm warning and a hurricane watch in effect for Bermuda. We expect those tropical storm conditions to begin uh, later today. And hurricane conditions are possible if Earl moves a little west of our forecast track and those brings those hurricane force winds closer to the island. Uh, and, uh, and then we are expecting Earl, as I mentioned, to strengthen and go on and become a major hurricane later today and tonight, and then accelerate northeastward into the North Atlantic and transition to a powerful post-tropical cyclone over the North Atlantic waters uh, to the east and southeast of Newfoundland as we go through the weekend and into early next week. The rainfall potential uh, on Bermuda from Earl is going to be about one to three inches with the system moving relatively quickly. Uh, shouldn't see a, a tremendous amount of rainfall, but certainly the potential for a few inches there. Now, Earl, again, is going to be a powerful hurricane with a big wind, a big wind field. It's going to kick up a lot of dangerous surf and waves. And as I mentioned yesterday, there's the potential for dangerous surf and rip current conditions almost along almost the entire United States East Coast with moderate to high uh, rip current risk extending from South Florida through the Carolinas and mid-Atlantic states to New Jersey, Long Island, and even into portions of southern New England. And those uh, dangerous surf and rip current conditions are going to start to increase and peak and continue all the way through the weekend. So please pay attention if you're going to the, uh, to the beach and uh, be, be sure to heed any warning signs that are out there uh, for, uh, for safe uh, swimming purposes. Uh, beyond Earl and Kay, we're looking at a couple of other systems we're monitoring here in the eastern Atlantic. We have an area of low pressure to the northwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. And this could become a tropical depression or tropical storm later today uh, if it gets a little better organized. We're also looking at a tropical wave that's just moved off the west coast of Africa. And that has a low chance of development over the next several days as it moves slowly west-northwestward across the tropical Atlantic. So as we're here at the peak of hurricane season, I encourage you to you know, stay tuned to your trusted sources of weather information. And this is Mike Brennan at NHC, and thanks for watching.